What's up guys, Dull Matter here, and today we're gonna be reacting to another task and purpose video. So this one is aged very well, because this is a two-year-old video, and the title of it is The M2 Bradley is an Outstanding Armored Vehicle. So, uh, yeah, recently, I don't know if it was the M2 Bradley, but it was one of the Bradley uh, vehicles, uh, took out a Russian tank. Everyone's been memeing on it really heavy. I think that was about a month ago, maybe two months ago. It was fairly recently. Uh, but yeah, this is a two-year-old video, so obviously the title's aged incredibly well. So, uh, link to the original video down below, and let's jump into it. Hello, fellow Spare Parts Army. I hope everyone out there is doing outstanding today. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Welcome to the channel. Today's episode is about my bay. Well, my bay systems, the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. A lot of detractors like to knock on the vehicle and claim it's a complete piece of garbage. If you look closely though, a lot of that criticism is completely fabricated and it comes from a 1998 Hollywood movie called The Pentagon Wars, which was hilarious, but largely false. Don't get your defense- Yeah, we actually watched the, uh, I think it was the, was it the Laser Pig video where he goes into like all the different stuff from the Pentagon Wars and how most of it is made up and it's actually based, so there was like this internal political conflict and it's based off like one side of the story of that internal political conflict of guys who were basically butt hurt because they were proven wrong and then somehow the the losing side story got turned into like the, the Hollywood narrative, which I mean, honestly just goes to show like how effective even unintentional propaganda can be, right? Because I don't think Hollywood set out to make this movie of like, look how dumb the American, well, I mean, they might have honestly, it's Hollywood you know, look how dumb the American military is, but <coughs> I, think, I think a lot of it was just a funny story. And then, yeah, that's what they end up with. And info from some movie, get it from a random YouTube channel instead. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the concept of the infantry fighting vehicle and how the upgraded M2A4 Bradley fits into that role. The original vehicle comes from the 1950s, back when the American forces were stuck on this old, outdated, horrible idea of how mechanized infantry should operate. His audio they were using the M113 transport, and they thought the future of war would be all about battle taxis, with only a 50 caliber machine gun that would ferry troops to the front line and then drop them off and cheese it back to safety. I love how they call it a battle taxi. I can't yeah. wait until I open up the Uber app one night and accidentally order an M2 Bradley XL. Do you have any- You know what's funny? There's actually multiple videos of guys doing this. The fucking, uh, I think Mr. Beast was the first one where they had like a mini tank. It wasn't a Bradley. It was some kind of like mini small tank and they were using it as an Uber. And then uh, I think Eddie Hall had like an old like 19, I can't, I think it was like 1950s, 1960s British tank that he bought. And he, he went on Uber with it. It's actually like an entire like subgenre of YouTube videos of people Ubering people in fucking tanks. Any idea how expensive that is during surge pricing? The first version of the Bradley came out in 1981 in direct response to the Soviet creation of the BMP. They thought about copying the Soviet idea, but instead they chose to create an entirely new doctrine. They imagined a vehicle that could fight alongside the M1 Abrams tank. It would help locate enemy targets and then it would drop ramp, infantry would run out, and help pin the enemy in that location. The highly maneuverable, fast Bradley is an integral part of heavy armored brigades, because without them, the main battle tank M1 Abrams would have less situational awareness and be far more vulnerable to being flanked. The infantry in the back of the Bradley are not really the focus of a Bradley unit in the same way that they are for a striker unit, but they're a key component as well. The seven dismounts in the back have the main task in a conventional war to destroy enemy anti-tank infantry. Bradley and armored vehicles are vulnerable to those enemy infantry. In just a second, I wanna tell you about the Bradley's fighting tactics and just how unfair the Pentagon Wars movie really was but first, time for our partner message from Guardian Naturals. Guardian Naturals Tactical CBD is my favorite force multiplier, and you can have it too for 25% <laughs> off if you use our code TASK25. So I popped this on my M4's Picatinny rail system, and now if I get too stressed or sore during training, I can just apply some Tactical CBD cream directly from my weapon. CBD helps me go full send on my Zen. I reach levels of relaxation I never thought was possible. Tactical CBD from Guardian Naturals has helped relieve years of back pain and mind tension. 
I've gotten closer to Jedi f***ing night levels of Nirvana <laughs> than ever before. <laughs> if you're not happy with the vibe, well, don't worry. The they have a pose. totally free spirit return policy that lets you send the product back within 30 days for a full refund. It works with your body's natural systems to relieve stress. Guardian Naturals Tactical CBD Cream is a veteran-owned business, and they're offering our audience 25% off when you use code TASK25 at checkout. Click the link in the description to get yours today. So the Eastern and Western Infantry Fighting Vehicle Doctrine couldn't be more different. The US forces chose an armored philosophy that was centered around having better protection, better armor, and more anti-tank capabilities. The M2A1 Bradley had a smaller gun, a 25mm autocannon, compared to the BMP's 30mm. But this meant crews could carry more ammo, which would be key if you expect to be outnumbered or need to operate for a longer period of time away from your supply line. With advances in ammunition capabilities over the years, the 25mm rounds are just as lethal against the BMP's armor as the BMP rounds are against the Bradley's armor. The Soviet design philosophy of the BMP chose to sacrifice crew safety with lighter weight armor so they could fit more soldiers inside and have more firepower on the vehicle's main. Yeah, I mean, I know militaries in general, you know, obviously you're, you're sending people into a war zone, not the safest thing, but the, the Soviets and now the Russians and even back when it was the Russian Empire, historically not known for really caring about the safety of their their uh, troops. A 30 millimeter gun. The BMP <laughs> is meant to be more of a troop transport, whereas the Bradley is meant to be a companion scout vehicle to the M1 Abrams tank. <laughs> so these two vehicles were destined to go head fun to head fun. against each other on the field of battle at some point. Prior to their creation, infantry transportation vehicles were never designed to have heavy firepower. Their first engagement would be during the first Gulf War. It's easy to want to use this engagement as proof that the M2 Bradley is superior to the BMP, but I think that would be a mistake. At the Battle of Eastings, Iraqi forces were using last generation BMPs from the 1960s, and they weren't as well equipped or trained on, so this isn't really a great one-to-one -one comparison. The American forces had the next generation Bradley with thermal sights and a better communications network. And this allowed them to coordinate between each other and focus fire on one enemy vehicle at a time. This kind of cooperation made the armor engagements completely one-sided. The Bradley armored unit's performance was incredible. They blew the BMPs away en masse. Now you might be asking in your head right now, why doesn't the Pentagon just make the vehicle bigger so you can fit more soldiers in it? Also, why don't they add more armor and firepower and, I don't know, make it 50 tons lighter so it's negative 10 tons? Negative what you're 10 thinking tons. of is called the Unicorn Infantry Fighting Vehicle. It exists <laughs> only in our collective military unconscious where we all get to ride into battle on that majestic mythical thing. The truth is we're constrained by modern technology. They're working on a vehicle that is fast approaching those capabilities, which will probably replace the Bradley someday. But until then, we have the upgraded versions of the Bradley. Cappy, M2 Bradley, vehicle commander, butting in here just for a second to tell you about my baby. So the hunter-killer capability is a fancy way of saying that my gunner and me can simultaneously use our own separate thermal sights to independently search around for enemy targets. The kicker is I can then press a button that will immediately swing the gunner's turret to what I'm looking at. The optic is so powerful, I can see an enemy make a hot fart on a cold day from 10 kilometers away. Isn't that just outstanding? Can I get a hua? Hua? The FBCV2 <laughs> GPS system gives the troops that are down inside that dark, cramped interior a digital view into the outside world. It's got maps, and it tells you exact location of your friendly forces. So I'll tell you what, anyone who thinks the M2 Bradley- The one thing that always blows my mind, and I don't know if this is just because they haven't declassified like the high quality maps, I assume that's the reason why, but I'm always amazed whenever I see like a map or something that's like a military camera, how fucking bad they are. I assume part of that's probably the whole like, you know, lowest bidder thing, right? You know, military grade equipment is just it's code for, you know, lowest grade bidder or lowest, uh, lowest bidder. Um, but I, I imagine part of that's also just the fact that like a lot this, you know, like this stuff is made in like the 60s. 
and the 70s and the 80s and like whatever the up to date like high quality shit we have today is not or it has not been declassified but i'm still surprised you don't see like even like the equivalent to like a modern like shitty digital cheap digital camera you can buy for like a grand you would assume they'd have something like that i'm sure there's some reason why or maybe they're worried about like it being too easy to hack into or something like that i'm not sure but there's got to be some reason why because every time i see a camera from a military vehicle it looks so shit really sucks they should come over here and say it to this beast so the western armored philosophy right from the get-go was like this they were like listen we know we're gonna be outnumbered. We're gonna have a lot less Bradleys than the enemy will have BMPs. So we need to make our vehicles more survivable and more lethal in order to negate their advantage. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to make it smaller and with a higher profile. So now the higher profile on the Bradley has been seen as a problem because it makes the vehicle easier to spot. But here's why I think that's a bullshit complaint. The Bradley has an insane weapons optics system with thermal imaging. During the Gulf War, they could see right through thick sandstorms and accurately fire out to 3,000 meters so they could engage enemy BMP targets way before the enemy could even see they were there. When we talk about logistics with the Bradley, it's a huge concern how difficult it is to maintain these tracked vehicles out there in remote outposts. Man, could you imagine being in the middle of a sandstorm and you get fucking shot from three kilometers away? I would be so pissed. <laughs> For instance, this article from the War Zone talks about how the Bradley out in northeast Syria had difficulties with just maintaining the vehicle. So the army had to send the Bradley unit back after only two months in Syria. You have to make sure you're able to fly new parts in. You have to make sure that there's people there that can fix it when it goes down, for instance. They had regardless. trouble deploying the Bradleys to Afghanistan for this reason. In just a minute, I'll cover the upgrades added to the M2A4 Bradley and the whole debacle over the Pentagon Wars movie. But first, I wanna get into the scout version of the vehicle because it's very important. A big part of the Bradley's tactics include the hunter-killer capability. One of the main variants of the Bradley is the M3 Scout version meant for Cav Scouts. Instead of completely disbanding cavalry units after horses became obsolete, they transformed them into recon units yeah, with scared. vehicles Pretty replacing <laughs> horses. So even though Cav mm -hmm. Scouts like to say they're basically infantry, in a way the opposite is really true. All mechanized infantry are basically Cav Scouts riding into battle on Bradleys instead of horses. But that's kind of funny that Cav, like, the cavalry wants to brag about being infantry because, like, a hundred years ago, and especially, like, two or three hundred years ago, you would never see them bragging about that. Like, the cavalry used to be, like, heavily associated with, like, the aristocracy, and now they're like, yeah, we're infantry too, guys. <laughs> So the M3 Bradley sacrifices carrying two of its dismounted soldiers in favor of adding tow ammunition, which if you've ever seen those rounds before, they're massive and they take up a lot of space. Dr. Cameron, an armor school historian, has this to say about the Hunter Killer M3 Bradley tactics, quote, the use of hunter killer teams necessitated a high degree of training and junior leadership competence to ensure the necessary cohesion between tanks and scouts. In fact, training constituted the principal concern expressed over the hunter killer team. Platoon leadership became more complicated, necessitating effective control over several mixed groupings of tanks, M3s, and dismounted scout teams. The ability of new second lieutenants to command such a team seemed problematic, especially when simultaneously required to coordinate aviation and fire support, end quote. So what I think Dr. Cameron is saying here is that the BMP might be more of an all-round, all-purpose vehicle that can operate independently. The Bradley needs that M1 Abrams piece of the puzzle. In a modern armor battle, having eyes on the enemy first is everything. A lot of it's gonna come down to the humans inside the vehicle. Who has the better coordination and communications network? The coordination here is between the three vehicle crew, which is the vehicle commander, the gunner, and the driver, 
and the dismounted element. It's basically like how the Power Rangers have to cooperate to move all their limbs <laughs> once they morph into the giant robot <clears throat> to fight against the giant evil lizard. But that's just the kind of 90s reference that you can expect from me to keep you awake. The vehicle has space laminate armor, which is explosive reactive and rated to stop incoming RPG and up to a 30 millimeter cannon. This is very impressive. When compared to the Striker, for instance, it can't stop an RPG without a giant RPG cage, and it can't stop anything bigger than a 50 cal. The upgrade in- I mean, honestly, even though that's kind of a, a downside about that vehicle, it does look cool. It looks like something from like Mad Max. <laughs> includes a new eight cylinder diesel engine with 675 horsepower. So oh, the damn. army gets to add 75 horsepower to their vehicle and that's okay. But when I soup up my O2 Toyota Camry, suddenly I'm illegally modifying my vehicle and it's a crime. They yeah. a new dual targeting system, which has always been able to fire at targets while moving at speed. Inside the vehicle, the gunner is able to switch ammo types with the press of a button. There's a top speed of 66 kilometers per hour, which is about the same as the BMP. The fuel tanks are now located outside the body of the vehicle, which prevents them from exploding inside the interior while you're in the back of the vehicle bullshitting about how hot it is outside. These changes all come at a cost though. It will now weigh an additional five tons to make it 45 tons. For comparison, the BMP only weighs 19 tons. The advantage to giving the Bradley tracks instead of wheels like the Striker is so it can traverse difficult terrain without getting stuck. This has the disadvantage of requiring more maintenance more frequently. The Bradley is equipped with the M242 25mm Bushmaster chain gun. It has a single barrel with integrated dual feed function so you can remotely select armor piercing or high explosive with the flick of a switch. That's the pretty convenient. The secondary weapon is the tow anti-tank missile system. That's honestly like incredibly convenient. <clears throat> Could you imagine being in the middle of a battle and you need you need to switch ammo type and then you have to like go down there, fucking take out all the one ammo, slap in the other ammo, fucking, yeah. I feel like that's a necessity. System, which when you press a button, it extends out of the side of the vehicle and it fires a guided missile through the air, which is attached to a Boom. wire. The next part is something I'm looking forward to setting the record straight on. People have been wrong about this for far too long. The Pentagon Wars movie put a lot of bad information out there into the public. It's a satire about the development of the Bradley fighting vehicle, and it makes the main character, Lieutenant Colonel Burton, look like a genius who's surrounded by fools trying to stop them from creating a piece of shit. When you actually go through each detail in the film though, it becomes clear they exaggerated all their claims and downright fabricated a lot of negative information about the vehicle so they could get some laughs. Spookston, another YouTuber, made a great video detailing all the specific points where the Pentagon Wars is inaccurate. But basically the movie ended up making a lot of people think the vehicle was a failure when in reality troops praise its performance. Only something like 20 out of 2,000 Bradleys were knocked out during the first Gulf War, and only about 150 were destroyed during the entire Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2003 to 2010. And those destroyed ones, very few of the crew were hurt thanks to the armor. The iterations between the A1 to the newest A4 include a GPS system, which allows you to know exactly where your friendly elements are. It has a laser rangefinder to help accurately engage enemies at far distances. They've even created a Prius-like electric hybrid Bradley, which will help with energy consumption, thus allowing them to add even more features onto a platform that is fast reaching its limit for upgrades. The electrical consumption issue is one of its biggest challenges to overcome as an aging platform at this point. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of the Bradley. I'm very passionate about mechanized infantry units because that's where I come from when I was in the army. So I'm biased towards the Bradley. I respect your opinion out there the Bradley, if you dislike the vehicle friends? or if you love the BMP more. Remember to head over and check out our new channel, Task and Purpose First Squad, to check out our longer form content that's focused on military news and culture. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and that you liked it. I hope you liked hearing about the different history and capabilities of the vehicle. Let me know what your opinions are <clears throat> and let me know what you think the perfect unicorn ideal infantry fighting vehicle would look like. Yeah, perfect ideal infantry fighting vehicle. I don't even know because I, th I think with a lot of these vehicles, it would, like honestly, you'd need like an infinite budget, right? Because you'd basically want 
a vehicle that's specified specifically for every mission, and no two missions are going to be the same, no matter how similar they are. Um, so I think it, in order to have a, you know, there's no such thing as one perfect vehicle. It's all trade-offs, right? It's like that with everything, right? Every, everyone thinks there's a perfect solution to, to you know, like a one-size-fits-all perfect solution to every problem ever made. But in reality, if you want something that's perfect for a specific problem, it's not going to be perfect for every problem. Uh, but yeah, the, the, this video has aged so well after, you know, the, the viral video of the Bradley fucking up the T90. It's so funny. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.